Hello and welcome to my channel. Continuing the series of antennas that can be used for Meshtastic, I couldn't resist trying this one out as it's fairly inexpensive, available from Amazon. It's sold as an LTE antenna, so it's for mobile phone usage for repeaters and so on. And the manufacturer is Urkia now, which I'm not going to say again. I'll put the name in the description. Made in China, of course, very light, feels like there's nothing in it. Um, Maybe you saw my short video where I actually held this thing up to the light so I could see what was inside. It's two concentric cylinders, it looks like, with two rods separating is what it looks like. And it's a dual band, wide band antenna, because I wanted a wide band antenna for listening around a bit more with the SDR, see what's around. And this uh, looked interesting. And then when I checked the frequency range, it's even more interesting because it's a omnidirectional ceiling antenna, so it has the same gain in many directions, or in all directions theoretically, and the frequency range is 698, if the camera will focus, 698 to 960 megahertz, which has the 868 LoRa frequency quite nicely in the middle, so it claims to cover that, and it also covers a higher band, which is 1710 to 2700 megahertz. So it is an LTE antenna, I think we call that 4G as well, <coughs> and let's see how well it performs. And what I'll do first is measure receive signal strength using my standard test transmitter, which is way down the end of the corridor in the shoe. Just so you can see some lights on it. That's the Nano VNA transmitting at 869 megahertz with zero sweep. So that's my standard transmitter these days, and the receiver is going to be this tiny SA. Let me switch it on. As usual, I'm just going to go to recall my setting, which is called a preset. Oops. Do that again. Preset. Um, what do I want? 868 to 870 with a big display. So that's the receive signal level. That's noise, in fact. Just to check that it's working, I'll put my favorite antenna on the home tuned half wave dipole. Sorry for the. Oh. My mother painted that. <laughs> this video is not edited. Right. That works. It's picking up a signal. And if we stand this up, what do we see? Minus 58.957. So it looks like I'm moving around to get the best signal level. And I think I saw minus 57.4. Maybe the other antenna is acting as a reflector. So let's say it's mainly minus 58. You can see the nodes I've got around here transmitting as well as big bursts of signal. As usual, you've got to find the highest signal spot due to reflections in this building. So it's minus 57 or so, maybe 58 dBm. So <clears throat> that's the received signal on the half wave, my calibration antenna. And what I'm going to do now is plug in the Okia now. You see I said it again wideband LTE antenna using only one hand. Let's see if I can do this. Have to bear with me while I screw that SMA connector on. There we are receiving minus 59 dBm, but I haven't found the optimum spot yet for it. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Stand by. Okay, got it. Ah, this is really heavy with that big block of wood. So, oh, maybe that was the optimum position for it. Minus 60, minus 59. Sliding around, minus 60, minus 59.4. So, it looks like it's not quite as good as the NFED half wave in terms of received signal level. It's maybe 1 dB worse. But there's a big trade off because that half wave antenna is a tuned antenna so it's only resonant at 868 megahertz and uh, doesn't have to function anywhere else and this is a supposedly wideband antenna so it's 1 dB worse than a half wave dipole which is still 1 dB better than an isotropic radiator because the half wave dipole theoretically has a gain of 2.1 dB over an isotropic radiator <coughs> dBi so it's like 1 dB yeah, 1 dBi of gain, which is not quite 10 or 12 dBs as it claims on the label. Well, then what do you expect? Um, those are optimistic dBs, these are real dBs. So it's 
Yeah, maybe one dB worse <clears throat> than the dipole antenna. The important thing though is it's supposed to be a wideband antenna. So let's um, see if it is, which means I need to disconnect the spectrum analyzer and reconnect the network analyzer, which is not here because it's down at the other end of the antenna test range, which I will go and get. So you can see the transmitter at 869 megahertz, very low level output signal. So hopefully it's not going to radi radiate outside this building too far. So um, you can see it's using a little stubby antenna, of course, which is also very low gain. So we take that off. And now I want to test that antenna. So how am I going to do that? <clears throat> Let's set up a nice sweep range because this is currently zero span. So let's recall um, 800 megahertz to one gigahertz. I've got a setting saved. So it's now sweeping from 800 megahertz to 1000 megahertz. Let's measure the SWR. Sorry about this while I connect it. Oh, it looks uh, quite respectable. <clears throat> and there you can see at 870 megahertz, close to 868, the SWR is 1.55, which is respectably okay. Um, <clears throat> it's actually a little bit better, a little bit lower in frequency, but that doesn't really matter. So when you go a bit lower, it does get down to maybe 1.2, and you go a bit higher, it gets up to 2.1 or so SWR. But for a broadband receiving antenna, that's what I wanted to use it for, that's fine. I wonder how well it works over a wider frequency range. So let's see if I can do this left-handed with one hand. Look at the menus, back, and now I want um, a recall. And let's do it from 50 kilohertz to 1.5 gigahertz. Oh, yes. <laughs> so there we are. That's uh, practically zero to 1.5 gigahertz, the SWR, and you can see over here it's very high. Um, <clears throat> so the center of the screen is 750 megahertz. So it's, it's good down to uh, the claimed frequency, quite probably of around about 700, in fact, whatever it was. And here there's quite a good resonance just below 870, but it's good enough. The SWR has changed. A little bit now it's moved up to two and it was one point something before but there we are <clears throat> still got this slightly better SWR down a bit lower in frequency than the 870 and goes up to two to one or even three to one here and back down to two to one and and so on this only goes up to 1.5 gigahertz so you can't test the top end of the frequency range but it's relatively okay as a match certainly for receiving and uh, so the antenna manages to be a broadband antenna, which is what I really bought it for. Works over a f quite a wide frequency range, <clears throat> at least, and is 1 dB better than an isotopic radiator. Maybe the 10 to 12 dB I gain is happening somewhere else outside the frequency ranges I can measure, because it's certainly not happening at 868 megahertz, but never mind, I didn't expect it to, especially not for the, the price, which was about 20 pounds, I think, on Amazon. And it's very light, an airy. I thought there was nothing in it when I first got it and um, <clears throat> actually I'm cheating because I've ordered a, a different one which has two cables coming out of the bottom for the two different bands which is probably connected to two different antennas inside and because it's a nice waterproof housing what I thought I'd do with the next one when it arrives is to open it and these are really well glued together so um, I tried to open this and gave up quickly. The next one I'm going to open it and I'm going to take out the high gigahertz antenna and maybe put a mesh-tastic node board inside. I don't know where it'll be, it'll either be here or here, and then leave in the low band antenna, wherever that happens to be, that covers 868. So I can make a completely self-contained node with an antenna inside. And of course, there's plenty of space in here for a battery as well. So all I need to feed in there is some DC to charge the battery or a USB is what I use, a long USB cable. So that's it, the Urkia now wideband LTE antenna is usable for Mesh-tastic behaves like <clears throat> any other whip antenna, really, but it has the advantage of being wideband for receiving on other frequencies of interest. So I look forward to reading your comments and questions below, and if you have any ideas for future videos, please make suggestions. And thank you for watching.
remember to like and subscribe and uh, see you in the next video.